I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AP Physics 1. We are on Unit 5. We are over halfway through the curriculum now. We're on Torque and Rotational Dynamics. Now, some of you may have heard negative things about this unit from former students. I like to call it how it is. I will say for 10 years my students always said this is one of the more difficult units of the curriculum. However, saying that, they ended up loving it as much as I love it because once you spend some time in it and understand it, it's really cool. So hang with us. You have done half of the curriculum so far. You're doing great and you can get this unit too. All right, we're gonna describe though this unit as we go through angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration, we're gonna be comparing it to linear. For 10 years I've been doing this, it just makes it click more in your mind, I think, or my students have said so. If you see what we've been doing the first semester laid out beside now rotational. Okay, so we're gonna have three videos. This one's gonna be about angular displacement. We're going to, the next one will be angular velocity, and the third one will be angular acceleration, and the big three. And then my colleague Beth is coming in with some problems and some, uh, some applications to these concepts, okay? But we've got to get the concepts down first before we can even start those problems, so let's get going. First, we need to decide what the difference is between centripetal motion and rotational motion. You have to get that straight in your head. Linear motion, we get it. You have a block sliding down a ramp or sliding across the floor, that's linear, moving in a line, right? <clears throat> centripetal, you might have seen in your dynamics unit. If not, you'll see it this semester, depending on when your teacher wants to teach it, however they wanna do it, it's the right way. But anyway, we have centripetal motion. That is when something is moving in a circle. So we have an object here, and it's moving all the way around in a circle, like a yo-yo, um, or a planet around the sun, or moons around planets. I realize those aren't circles, they're ellipses, but it's the same concept. It's that centripetal motion of an object moving in a circle. All right? Now, rotational though, rotational dynamics is something that's rotating on an axis. I have a little tag here so you can see it, it's hard to see, but it's rotating on an axis. It's not moving in a circle, the whole object, it's just rotating on an axis, that's rotational. Now that we've got those three kind of set in our minds, let's just jump right into angular, well, to linear displacement and then angular displacement. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna do all of these, these three videos in the same order with symbol, unit, and then equation. All right, the symbol for displacement we remember is delta x. It also could be delta y if we were doing free fall and talking about vertical versus horizontal. As you get farther on, uh, actually not too much farther on in your engineering physics, we're gonna be seeing this as delta s way more, uh, meaning that it's just a generic term for displacement. All right, the unit here is a meter, if you remember, because remember displacement is just what was the what was the uh, distance in meters? What's the displacement in meters, I should say, from point A to B? All right, what the displacement was. The equation for that was delta x, that displacement is equal to the final position minus the initial position. All right, so that's what displacement was when we were talking about linear. Now let's talk about angular. All right, now one of the reasons that this unit is difficult for students is because the symbols are in Greek. You know that saying, it's all Greek to me, meaning I'm confused, I don't understand. Uh, you're gonna see all of the symbols, most of them are in um, Greek. You're also gonna see units you're not familiar with because we don't tend to work in radians, we work in degrees or revolutions in our daily life. We tend to think of things that move in a line, not things that rotate. So all of these, these things lead to some confusion and some just feeling uncomfortable in this unit. But here's my advice to you. Spend a little bit more time than you've spent in the first semester on understanding the symbols and the units and the equations, even though I know you have an equation sheet, but beginning very familiar with those and understanding what they actually mean concept-wise 
and you're going to be way better off in this unit if you know units because remember just like in linear our word problems we used units as clues and words as clues all right so get more familiar with the words and the units in this in in this unit five and you're going to be a lot better off okay the symbol here for angular displacement is a theta and actually it's going to be delta theta it's going to be that change in your theta all right that's going to be your symbol for angular displacement and this is going to be theta it's a greek letter all right the unit for this is going to be radians and just like how the equation was final position minus initial position it's going to be the same thing here it's going to be final theta minus initial theta okay now that may not mean anything to you yet because we don't understand what you mean by theta and radians. Okay, so let's go to the unit circle and let's make sure that we understand this unit circle. All right, when we talk normally and when we're talking about things rotating on an axis, we would say you're at zero degrees, then you're at 90 degrees, then you're at 180 degrees, and then you're at 270 degrees, and then you're back to 360 degrees. Okay, actually, let me write the 360 degrees down here when you go all the way around. Okay, now, in, that's in degrees. We're comfortable with that. We're also pretty comfortable with revolutions. You start at zero revolutions. You go to one-fourth of a revolution, right? You go to one-half of a revolution. I'm going to start with revs and abbreviate that. And then you go to three-fourths of a revolution because you're three-fourths of the way around the circle. All right, three-fourths of a revolution. And then you're back to uh, one revolution, one complete revolution. All right, so these are just ways to measure this getting around on this axis, how far you've gone oh, as you're rotating on the axis. All right, well, it's very similar to like one revolution equals 360 degrees. It'd be very similar to when we had to do a dimension analysis because they gave us maybe our displacement feet, but we had to have meters. Or they gave it to us in kilometers or centimeters and we had to convert it to meters. All right, well, in angular displacement, you have to measure in radians. We're not fam as familiar with that. So that's another reason it makes this unit feel uncomfortable. But once you realize, it makes it a lot easier, once you realize how that compares to 360 degrees in one revolution. You start at zero radians, and by the way, you're gonna abbreviate that as rad because the rotational dynamics unit is rad, uh, as we like to say, or I do anyway, but do not abbreviate that as an R because we're gonna have quite a few um, equations here that have R in it meaning radius. So you don't wanna get radius and radians confused. They are not the same thing. Radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the outside of, the, of your uh, shape. All right, if this is a solid shape and radians are is the measurement the unit of how far you've gone around that shape okay so we start with zero radians and we get up here and let me actually do this in red so we can distinguish we have zero radians then we have pi over two radians up here and then here we are at pi radians down here we are at uh three pi over two radians, all right? And then here we are at two pi radians, okay? So one complete time around this shape is two pi radians. Now, that means that's equal to 360 degrees and it's equal to one revolution. My colleague Beth is gonna do more of these, but just real easy, if I were to go around two revolutions, and they tell me I've gone around two revolutions, you must have your unit in radians, so you cannot use revolutions. So you would have two revolutions. You're gonna use your dimension analysis, the railroad track. We want this in radians, so we're going from revolutions to radians. We know that two pi radians, I want that on top, because that's what I wanna to go to, is equal to one revolution. My revolutions cancel, and I have four pi radians. 
would be my answer. Because one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. So that's like saying one over one. All right? Because they're equal. Now, let's say that I said I, was, I went 720 degrees. All right? And I want to go degrees to radians. Okay, well, here we go. We're just going to kind of erase this right here. I put my 720 degrees on top over 1. There's 2 pi radians in 360 degrees. Okay, my degrees cancel. I would do 720 times 2 times pi divided by 360, and I'm going to get 4 pi radians again because 720 is also 2 times around. So that's how you're going to be converting, but you got to get into radians. And don't let radians scare you. They're just like another unit. It's like the difference between feet and meters. It's a different unit to say how you got around this circle. All right, so in other words, if I go back to my demo, I'm here. I go around once. That's one revolution. That's 360 degrees. That's two pi radians. It's just three different ways to say the exact same thing. We need it in radians, though, for the problems. Okay? Perfect. Now, next, we need to talk about direction. Remember that displacement, and shame on me for not putting these up, but displacement is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. Angular displacement also has magnitude and direction. It's not a vector, though, in the true sense. It, uh, it does not uh, follow one law. So, uh, of vectors, so we can't call it officially a vector, but it definitely has magnitude and direction. All right, now, so what's the direction? When you're in AP Physics C and you're moving into your engineering classes in college, because been there, done that, you're going to be using the right hand rule. In AP Physics 1, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to call it uh, just what's counterclockwise is positive and what, clock, what is clockwise is negative. Okay, so I'm going to write that down counterclockwise and this is where my students used to groan they're like why is counterclockwise positive all right but counterclockwise is positive all right well because think about it the universe everything moves counterclockwise all right and then clockwise not everything but most things and then clockwise is negative okay so in other words, and now we have to remember what counterclockwise and clockwise is, because for generate for a whole two generations now, we've been using digital. So remember, counterclockwise is in this direction. I'm going to use the red. This is counterclockwise, and it would be positive. So in other words, if I start at zero and I go to 90, that's going to be a positive, that's going to be a positive pi over 2 radian displacement because I went from 0 to pi over 2. I go from 0 all the way over to my 180 degrees. That's also pi radians. So that would be a positive pi radians that I have displaced. OK? An angular displacement of pi radians positive. However, if I go, that's counterclockwise. If I go clockwise, so I start at 0 and I go this direction. All right, that's going to be negative angular displacement. So just like how in displacement linear, west and south were negative, north and east were positive, a lot of times we assigned up as positive and down as negative. Here, counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. So I'm going from zero down here. I have a negative displacement, all right, angular displacement. Perfect. I think that is it for angular displacement. A uh, short video, understanding it, but I wanted to not add to the video and make it too long when I'm talking about angular velocity. So there's your first video. Next one coming at you is angular velocity and how that compares to linear. And we're going to be talking about that tangential velocity too. If you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe. And I uh, hope you're having a great day. I am still in my Christmas shirt because I'm still on Christmas break. But thank you for watching and happy physicsing.